Blue. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to the Dunstable Memorial Day Parade and uh, observances. It's a unique little town, and we have a unique ceremony. Uh, every year we pick a certain war to remember. This year is the 100th anniversary of the war, the First World War. First World War ended November 11, 1918. So it's almost 100 years ago. This is time our community comes together and pause and reflect on those who came before us and served their country. Not only those who paid the ultimate price, but also those who left their homes and joined the call to arms. The Civil War, which ended in the spring of 1865, claimed more lives than any conflict in the U.S. history at the time and required the establishment of the country's first national cemeteries. I'm not quite that tall. By the late 1860s, Americans in various towns and cities had begun holding springtime tributes to those countless fallen soldiers decorating their graves with flowers and reciting prayers. On May 5th, 1868, General John A. Logan, leader of an organization of Northern Civil War veterans, called for a nationwide day of remembrance. Later that month, May 30th, 1868 is designated for the purpose of strewing flowers and otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion, and whose bodies now lay in almost every city, village, and hamlet courtyard in the land, he proclaimed. The, day, the date of Decoration Day, as it was called, was chosen because it wasn't the anniversary of any particular battle. On the first Decoration Day, General James Garfield General James Garfield made a speech at Arlington, Arlington National Cemetery and 5,000 participants decorated the graves of the 20,000 Union and Confederate soldiers buried there. Many northern states held similar commemorative events and reprised the tradition in subsequent years. By 1890, each one had made Decoration Day an official state holiday. Southern states, on the other hand, continued to honor their dead in separate days until after World War I. Memorial Day, as Decoration Day gradually came to be known, originally honored only those lost while fighting in the Civil War. But during World War I, the United States found itself embroiled in another major conflict, and the holiday evolved to commemorate American military personnel who died in all wars. For decades, Memorial Day continued to be observed on May 30th, a date Logan had selected for the first Decoration Day. But in 1968, Congress passed the Uniform Holiday, Monday Holiday Act, which established Memorial Day as the last Monday in May in order to create a three-day weekend for federal employees. The change went into effect in 1971. The same law also declared Memorial Day a federal holiday. Cities and towns across the United States host Memorial Day parades each year, often incorporating military personnel and members of veterans groups. Some of the largest parades take place in Chicago, New York, and Washington, D.C. Americans also observe Memorial Day by visiting cemeteries and memorials. While our parade and ceremonies here in Dunstable are small in comparison, they are just as important and meaningful. They also show that we, as a nation, are connected and linked to one another. This time I'd like to ask Pastor Bobby Ross of the Dunstable Congregational Church to give the invocation. Good afternoon. On this Memorial Day, we remember those who gave their lives during the war that ended 100 years ago this year, as Dan had just mentioned. Known as the Great War, the World War, 
the war that to end all wars. Rather, we remember it, unfortunately, as the first world war. World War I is the third deadliest war of all time. Not playing a major role, America joined World War I on April 6, 1917, because a German submarine sunk a British passenger ship known as the Lusitania that killed 1,195 passengers. 128 of those were American citizens. The U.S. is only a part of combat for seven months. During this time, around 116,000 soldiers were killed and 204 were injured. Today we gather to honor those who served our country by giving their lives so that we may live in freedom. We must be constantly reminded of our gift of freedom and of those who gave all to ensure future generations could continue to know a life of a free society. Let me pray. Gracious God, on this Memorial Day, when our minds and hearts are invited to remember our nation's history and those who died in defense of our country, it is with great gratitude that we acknowledge the gift of life that we have through the lives that were given on the seas, on the land, and in the air, so that we can enjoy the fruits of freedom, continue to strengthen our commitment to do that which is good and just. This I pray in the holy name of God, our eternal Father. Amen. 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 World War I began in 1914 after the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand and lasted until 1918. During the conflict, Germany, Austria-Hungary, Bulgaria, and the Ottoman Empire fought Great Britain, France, Russia, Italy, Romania, Japan, and the United States. Because of new military technologies and the horrors of trench warfare, World War I was unprecedented levels of carnage and destruction. By the time the war was over, the Allied powers claimed victory, but more than 16 million people, soldiers and civilians alike, were dead. The United States entered the war in April 1917, and the war lasted 19 more months. During that time, 4,731,000 men and women were in uniform. 53,000, more than 53,000 Americans died in battle. More than 63,000 died in non-battle-related incidents. And over 204,000 were wounded were wounded during the conflict. On November 11th, 1918, the war to end all wars came to an end, if that were only true. This afternoon, our guest speaker comes to us from the city of Lowell. Councilor Rodney Elliott has served over 25 years with the United States Environmental Protection Agency in both Washington and Boston. He is currently budget director of Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation in Boston. Rodney is a 21-year Lowell City Council member and served as the 34th Mayor of Lowell. He is a candidate for the State Senate, 1st Middlesex District, which was vacated by Senator Eileen Donahue, who has spoken here numerous times. Please welcome Councillor Elliott. Well, good afternoon. Um, thank you, Dan uh, Dana, Pastor Ross. Ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's an honor to join you here this afternoon for this celebration on this Memorial Day weekend. A steadfast concert for peace can never be maintained except by a partnership of democratic nations. It must be a league of honor, a partnership of opinion. Only free peoples can hold their purpose and their honor steady to a common end and prefer the interests of mankind to any narrow interests of their own. That was Woodrow Wilson's words before Congress upon the U.S. entering World War I, the Great War most commonly used name for First World War, great 
simply indicated the enormous scale of the conflict, which had moral connotations. Every generation of Americans have been called to defend our freedom and liberty. The Great War called over 4.7 million men and women to serve in the regular U.S. forces, with about 2.8 million serving overseas. There were 53,402 killed in action, 63,114 deaths. Across the nation today, we may see veterans distributing red poppy, symbolizing where the red flowers suddenly bloomed across newly dug grave sites of fallen service members in World War I. They turned up in new grave sites across the battlefields. The poppy were the first flowers to grow and churned up earth of soldiers' grave in Flanders, Belgium. Although all World War veterans have since passed, 100 years later, the poppy has become a universal display of sacrifices made by Americans and allied service members around the world. It has become a symbol of their sacrifice, a tribute to the price of freedom. We too cherish the poppies red that grows where valor led. It seems to be a signal to the skies, the blood of heroes that never dies. Written by Moira Michael in Flanders Field. Poppy visual, visualizes the magnitude of this sacrifice and reminds us all the price that had been paid. We celebrate today so that generations to come will be reminded that more Memorial Day is to thank our nation's heroes who paid the ultimate price so selflessly so that we, we may be free and we may be great. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you so much for having me, and thank you to all the men and women in the armed services. I'd like to acknowledge all the veterans here today. Whether you are in uniform or not, we want to thank you for your service, both now and in the past. For those currently serving, we pray for your safety and well-being. We have some dignitaries here in the parade today. I'd like to recognize our Board of Selectmen, Ms. Leah Baz Baines, Mr. Ron Michael, and Mr. James Tully. Our Honorable State Representative, our Honorable State Representative, Ms. Sheila Harrington, and of course, our guest speaker this afternoon, Wall City Councilman, Mr. Rodney Elliott. It is also our privilege to have Fire Chief Rich and Police Chief Dow with us this afternoon as well. At this time, we will be laying wreaths at the memorials. Mr. Dennis. Starting with the Civil War Veterans. Monument, and Chuck. Mr. Peter Georges and Evan Villadeau, Scout. Present Arms. You don't have to hold your ears, there won't be a volley till after all the rings are done. <laughs> First World War, Scott Adams. 
Evans and Ethan Everman. Second World War, Captain Heather Mazzaccaro and Adele Tully. Veterans, present arms. Our veteran was a captain. Korean veteran David Ambrose and Ruth Ann Ambrose. Company present. Mark. Captain Heather Mazzaccaro and Kira Scully. Revolutionary War Monument, retired Colonel Peter Eberhardt and Allison Neely. Thank you all. Captain, could we have a salute, please? Company, make ready. Take aim. Fire! While the scouts ready the flag to continue down to the uh, cemetery, would all veterans come up front here so we can have a picture of you, whether you're in uniform or not, whether you're in the parade or you're a bystander. All veterans come up in front here of the uh, Revolutionary War Monument for a picture, please. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. 